Hi, and welcome to Laura's Life Coaching. Today we're going to talk about bullying. I think this is an interesting topic considering everything that's going on in the world right now. You know, I kind of came to this realization um, that bullying and codependency kind of go hand in hand. And let me tell you why. So when I was being bullied when I was in middle school, um, a lot of the same problems that I was facing were the problems that I faced as a codependent. I didn't know how to stand up for myself. I didn't know how to set healthy boundaries. And I didn't know how to stand in my power. And I didn't know how to say no to others. And a lot of the times when kids don't understand how to take their own power into their own hands, that can create a lot of problems later in life. So what I really realized was a lot of the issues that I had with codependency actually stemmed from bullying. And it wasn't necessarily that, you know, we can stop people from bullying because that's a whole nother topic. And while I wish that would happen, I think that there's a lot that goes into that with um, how the kids are raised and how they act out um, because of insecurities. Um But I really think that we can tackle this by teaching kids about codependency. So how do we do this? So for me, the first step in healing codependency is learning to say no to others. So when kids are being bullied, they're being told that, you know, they don't look right they don't act right, they're not good enough, and they take those things on as truth. They think that what that other person is saying is true for me, and that must mean I'm a horrible person. And instead of taking that as truth, you know, they in- when they do that, they internalize it. And when they start standing up for themselves, they can start to have a ripple effect in all of their their life. And when they stop the bullying at the source and realize that I can say no to this bully and I can say, no, that doesn't resonate with me, thanks, and walk away. Because for me, when I was being bullied, they would pick on things that were insecurities within me. And I felt like I wasn't good enough. I felt that I was weird or I was an outcast and I was just, you know, not popular enough, not good enough. And I took that to heart. And a lot of these kids are really taking what other people are saying to heart. But if they learn their own self-worth and they, they understand that what that person is saying is not necessarily their truth, that's how they start to end the cycle. Because if you're not feeding the bully what they want, that's how we get out of this cycle of bullying. And it can really have such a profound effect on them later in life. So the second step is to set healthy boundaries. And how do they do that? Well, setting healthy boundaries means that if somebody is being bullied and they're being, you know, ridiculed, ridiculed, somebody comes up to them in the hallway and says, you're so stupid, you don't know anything, you don't, you know, like making fun of their shirt, making fun of their hair, um, whatever it is, instead of that person um, feeling inferior to that other person, the, the victim of the bullying 
um, can instead choose not to play the victim. And they can understand that even though this person says this about me, that isn't necessarily true. And they don't have to take that as their truth. So once they take their power back and set that healthy boundary, and either by ignoring the bully, either by saying, that's nice, and walking away, the worst thing that you can do to a bully is, is show that you're upset. Because that's exactly what they want. They want you to become really upset about something in your life. And it's not to say that you're not upset. You can still be emotionally attached to certain things, but once you know your worth, once you know that I'm okay exactly who I am, and whatever this bully tells me, it's their projection of their insecurities in themselves and not me. I think so many times when kids are trying to figure out themselves, especially in the preteen and teenage years, it's that awkward stage of, I don't understand myself, so I'm going to either make fun of somebody else or I'm going to take that person making fun of me as my truth because they must know more than me. And that's not true. And really when you start to just understand that you are okay being exactly who you are, that's really when we're going to make this shift with bullying. And so, you know, in a sense, what I do with my coaching is very similar to how I want to help people with bullying. I think that, you know, codependents are pretty much just an adult version of children that have been bullied or that have been ridiculed at some point in their life. Um, and I think that it really has, it can have a ripple effect. I think bullying and taking on that um, bullying as your truth can really ha start having a profound effect later in life. Um, it can lead into unhealthy relationships with people. It can make you start to question your own value. It can even make you um, want to continue to fix people and try to help them and try to heal them. I think a lot of the times it's the ones that are very, that are quiet and shy and nice and they just want to help people and they want to bring their light to the world. Those are the ones that often get bullied the most. And it's unfortunate because if they're not understanding of their worth and their value and they're not getting it from other sources, these kids really internalize this and, and really believe that they're not worth it, that they're not okay. And especially with kids that are going through the, um, that are in the LGBT community and, you know, kids that are, that come from broken families that have issues at home, these kids really need help understanding their worth and their value. So I really think that what we can do to help this is to really raise awareness of codependency, especially at a young age, because had I had the knowledge of understanding why I was feeling the way that I was feeling when these people would bully me and how I was seeking love and approval outside of myself versus seeking the internal source, which make, is always okay. It always makes me feel good. And you always feel like you're in your power. So once you kind of cultivate that power, then you can really resonate 
much more in your truth and start to understand who you are and really walk in your purpose in this life. Had I had that when I was younger, I wouldn't have had to go through a lot of the the struggle that I went through in my life. And I wouldn't have had to really deal with all of the um the wanting of to seek approval outside of myself because nobody outside can ever give us the love that we need to give ourselves and if we teach kids that and we teach them how to love themselves completely exactly who they are that's really when we start to shift the way that kids see themselves and it can have such a profound ripple effect in all of society and I'm not saying it would be perfect but I'm saying that when when we teach this and when we teach about bullying I really believe it's so important in this day and age and I really want to make some sort of impact with children and to help them know their worth and know their value and to really understand the bullying from this perspective and to know that what that bully is saying is not their truth and it's not who they are. And I really, I just really want to put this message out there because I think it's so important. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like, um, you can click below to subscribe to my channel and also click on my website to check out what I, ha I have on there. Alright, thank you so much.